Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a special episode where I'm gonna talk about how to pack, ship, and move your CD collection. And this can be for vinyl too as well because the same traits apply as to what I'm gonna talk about here. This all has to do with both things that are what we don't like about how people ship to us as to way we can do better and ship out to them. But also, if you're getting ready to move and you've got a huge collection like me, I've got over 11,000 CDs, the question becomes, how do you move them? How do you keep from all of them getting destroyed. So we're gonna cover that in a wide variety of different topics and ways to do that today. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this, with how best to ship, pack, uh, you know, and move CDs, all that sort of stuff, we're gonna be covering right here. So I'm gonna start off by talking about some of the different uh, packing things that we get. We all know about these. The Amazon bubble mailer that really has no bubble to this thing. They're horrible. You get these things, there's no hard corners and it all gets damaged, bent, that kind of stuff. So we don't like that. There's a little bit better one that's the, the paper one where it has the glued seams and those are kind of hard dense corners and this one helps better there's a little bit of padding to it it is from amazon and i will say i've been getting more of these basically two or more arrive in this single ones have been arriving in this so these are a little bit better if you see these these are good because they have the hard corners i'm going to get into some more detail on that in just a minute now the ones i like are the global ones that when i order something from the uk because i'm here in new york city united states and they ship in this I've got a CD here. I'm gonna put a jewel case in this one. It has very hard, dense corners, and that's something that I wanna build upon in this. It's having a buffer around it where the CD is in the middle. It's about there, and we have all this extra space that can get banged around and damaged. Now, it doesn't prevent this part of it here. Yes, the case could come cracked there, but it's all about these hard edges. So now, if obviously, if you have, I save these, I reuse these, but we don't have those. There's ways to create those. Now, one of the ones I actually really like is this. Um, and this is just the cardboard box. Let me open it up here. So it opens like this. And let me put the disc in it and just show you guys. So even though it's actually built to the size of the CD, because it's so dense and hard at the corners, I never get any damage with these. I don't even get cracked cases in these. So these are great, but I'm gonna unfold this because you can actually make these yourself out of a piece of cardboard. It's very simple. It's one piece of cardboard like this. You can start just by tracing this and folding it into place. And so as an example, you know, you get cardboard boxes like these and you just have to find a side or somewhere that this thing fits. This one happens to be a little too small for it, but bigger boxes work. And of course you get all kinds of sizes and stuff. So these can be made simply by laying down and tracing out and folding and having your own. Now, that's a lot of work, right? We don't necessarily want to go through all that. So let me put that down, put that aside, and I'm going to show you a different way. So again, here's another Amazon box, and I'll ship one CD in this and then put like some bubble wrap stuff, those airbags in here that does nothing too, because too much movement of the CDs jostling around is just as bad as no, you know, them being tight in place and then being crushed that way. So that is something to consider within this. So where I wanna go with this is we have these cardboard boxes. I've got another one that's over here. And the flaps that are on these things, in fact, I think this one's gonna be best for us. I'm gonna take the jewel case and what you just simply wanna do is hold that jewel case next to it and see if the thing is big enough. And it looks like it is. So what I'm gonna do is, and this is again where having an X-Acto comes into play. Scissors will work in this but the X-Acto blade lets you cut a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. And there's already a line on here that we're gonna cut from. Now, I'm gonna remind everybody to be very careful of this. Uh, I'm an architect and I use these things all the time, so I, I'm sort of trained, so to speak. And I, I don't mean that to be funny, but what I do want to let everyone know, you know, these things are sharp, watch your fingers, put this down on the ground when you're cutting it. I'm holding it up here because I want you guys to see but in fact, it's best if you put this down on the floor to do this. But if you cut in here and you bring the blade down on it as so, and you begin to cut through it, you'll then be able to separate that. But I'm now gonna transfer this. I'm gonna put this on the floor so that I can show you properly how to do this. 
All right, everyone, so we're back here. I wanted to put this down to make this a little bit more safe and to really be able to show you what I'm talking about. So again, we've got the flap of this and it's already got the crease that runs along here. And if we take the X-Acto and we put it in here, I can run it along this and I can get this box thing cut off like this. And this is what we're talking about here. Now, with the CD on this thing, if we come along here and we just sort of make a little score, not too close, then I can actually snap and bend this thing around very easily. And then I'm gonna come on the back side here and I'm gonna put just a little crease. Don't cut all the way through. You just want enough that bends it. See how it made this little box? Now this is essentially the same thing that we were talking about here. So what this is gonna allow for is, if I put the disc in and I put that over it, and then I see that I need just a little extra here, so I'm gonna flip this over because you wanna cut on the side that you want the bend to happen. So I cut a little bit out there, it'll fold over, and then I need to cut it again a second time along here. And watch your hand. Don't go too fast, you don't wanna cut yourself, and fold it over. Now, in this simple case here, you can use, you know, tape or something to secure it. But in this particular case, I find it's easier just to put a rubber band on it like so. Now the cardboard all the way around this thing is gonna protect that case. Then if you want, and I'm gonna come back to the screen here. If you want, you can still use one of those bubble mailers for the thing. So it's easy to ship, but that way, very easy. All right, so we're back, the camera's on me. This is what we were just looking at here. Here's the, the CD wrapped in the cardboard. Obviously do it just a little bit bigger than, than I did because you really want to cover all of it. I was trying to do it quick, but you basically cut the cardboard a little bit bigger than you need. And I'm gonna take the, card, the rubber band off this one so we can use this piece as an example here. Now, these are the ones that you really want to protect, right? These are nice cardboard cases and the same thing with a DigiPack or, or cardboard one. It's these corners, you know, you can change a jewel case, but you can't change these out. This piece is a little too small, I understand that, but this cut to the right size would be a nice protector for this. You just have to make it a little bit bigger than it. So a piece of cardboard like that, and this, what I'm talking about here is really just for shipping, right? So we've got all these different methods and these ways, but the bottom line is giving it that rigid hard edge, much like this one, the global one, is gonna do wonders. Now, maybe the reason you've joined this video or wanted to see this video is the idea of about moving CDs, lots of CDs, right? Thousands of CDs, how best to do it. All right, so I've done this move a number of times. I did this move eight times the first year I moved to New York City because I was jumping around to different apartments and things, kind of trying to figure everything out. And I also just had some bad luck with places that got sold and I had to move and so forth. So long story and all of that for another time. But in my opinion, I found the best way to do it. And it happens to be from these storage boxes here. And if you've watched some of my other videos about how to make these boxes, and I'm gonna leave a link specifically in here for those, I found that not only for storing CDs, but it worked great for shipping them as well. So I do have a box here with me, and I'm gonna open it just to show you guys the ones that have maybe never seen these things. The insides of these, it holds 90 CDs. Now what I want you to notice about this is that it's packed fully. There's no space, there's no jostling, there's nothing. It just holds 90 CDs tightly fixed in here. So this particular box, and you can see how I've cut it off, this is a box that's called a banker box. So it doesn't matter about this number that you see on the side, that is a Staples brand. But if you don't have a Staples or you can't find that box and a lot of you guys have had trouble with it, all you gotta do is go on to Amazon or any shipping company and ask for a banker box. And that's the style of this. And then you measure it down to the height of the CD, the spine, and you cut it off. It's really that simple. And like I said, I have a whole how-to tutorial on making the box itself and going into the detail of that. I'll leave a link in the description. But what I wanna point out is that by having the, the CDs in these boxes tightly fit, it's the jostling, it's the movement that breaks these things. If there isn't any of that movement within it, and it holds them very secure, that, in my opinion, is the best way to move these. Uh, you can try, I've tried everything with packing and different things, and in the end of the day, it's these hard-edged corners like this, and it makes it great for just stacking boxes into the truck, moving them, etc. Yes, if someone drops one of these on a corner and it 
hits hard enough, it could crack that corner case. But you have to plan for the idea that that isn't going to happen within it, that people aren't going to be kicking these boxes down the street, so to speak. And that is a gamble to take. But if you try to do it the other way, too much movement inside of these things will crack and break everything. So I just found that it is best to keep things densely tight. So similar to the way we want to pack tight around a single disc, you want to pack tight around all of yours. Now, I want to take it a step further because what happens if the truck that you're shipping in has a leak? What if it rains on the day, right? You don't want cardboard getting wet. So these plastic bags, and it can be any size, but the, what you wanna do is find one that is big enough that when you open it up, you can actually lay it down in the box, fold it out, and put all of the CDs back in. And give me just a minute, I'm gonna set up for that and I'll show it to you. Okay, so here we are with the box, right? I've actually emptied the contents out of it, I've taken the lid off of this thing. Here's the simple trash bag that I'm talking about. And this is a big one here. So I just lay the bottom into this thing and start opening it here like so. And I'm gonna actually go all the way down to the bottom. I wanna get every bit of that open. So in, in this particular case, a lot of waste on this, I understand, but it's gonna protect it. And you simply fold it over the sides the way that I'm doing. And you get it down until you just have enough in there. In fact, I wanna keep going so that I don't have a lot of this in there. Because if you have too much of this in there, it's going to cause a problem when you try to close the box up tightly. So we wanna keep pulling that out and we want to get it to a point where now what we can do is take the CDs themselves and start putting them in. And very quickly what you can see is and I'm just gonna get one row in this thing. Let me get the rest one in here. Okay, so you can see how I got the row in. Now, I could actually do the whole thing in here, but the point is, I then bring the rest of this in over it, and you can cut off the excess if you want. But by doing that, if this box gets wet, doesn't matter, your CDs are in plastic here. So that's the idea behind this. So if you wanna go that extra step and really protect them and guarantee that they can't get wet or whatever, this is the way to do it. All right, so there you go. In my opinion, that is the best way to pack, ship, and move CDs. Um, got uh, you know a couple different methods that we covered. The bottom line is it's all about getting a good tight fit around those discs and you saw the boxes like these and so forth. So. Hopefully that helps you guys out, gives you some direction. You know, I, I will say nothing is 100%, nothing is perfect, but I've made a number of moves and this has worked pretty well for me and I hope it works for you guys too. All right, everyone, take care, have a great day, and I'll certainly talk to you soon. Bye-bye.